Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome back to MapKit and Core Location video tutorial series. If you think about Core Location as the model, then MapKit is the view in more ways than one. In this video, we'll cover the basics of map views and how you can include them into your app. Getting started with MapKit is as easy as dragging a map view onto your view controller. With a few constraints to set your view in place, the map view will display a default location. The MK map view comes with four different map types. The first is a standard map type. This is just a map with line drawings. The satellite map view provides satellite imagery of the location. The hybrid provides ro roads, landmarks, and other information over the satellite view. And finally, there's the satellite flyover and hybrid fly flyover, which present 3D representations of your map, which we'll be covering later in this video series. Maps come with all sorts of customization options that you can set in Interface Builder or on the object itself. For instance, you can disable pinching or rotation gestures to prevent the user from navigating the map. Interface Builder also allows you to customize whether you'd like building, traffic, and points of interest. You can also choose to show a compass or the scale, but you'll have to make those changes in code. You also have the ability to show a user's location on the map, on the map but by simply checking the checkbox doesn't absolve you for asking permission. You still must create a location manager and make a permission request depending on the needs of your app. Chances are the default map location will not match the location you have in mind. To provide a default location, you need to create a CL location object, but this object only lets the map view know where the center point is. You also need to provide the distance you'd like to display from that point. This distance is a type of CL location distance, which is just a double. You need to provide the distance in terms of both latitude and longitude. And once you have that data, you call the method MK coordinate region make with distance. This method will return a region object, which you then set to the map view by calling set region. Finally, there may be times when you need to respond to certain map events. For instance, you may want to perform some processing while the map view is loading data. MK map view also has delegate, delegate methods for when the map is about to be rendered or when it is finished rendering. And of course, there are methods for tracking user location, very much like core location, so you should feel right at home. For a comprehensive list, definitely check out the MK map view delegate documentation. Map views are a pretty handy tool that we have in our toolbox in UIKit. As you can see in this, I've created a simple sample project here, and we have a view controller already out there. I'm going to add a map view to this. I can simply open up my object library here and type in map view. And you can see here's my map kit view. I'm going to put it here and then I'm going to constrain it to my controller. Now with my map view in place, you can see in the attributes inspector, we have a whole bunch of options. First, we can choose standard, satellite, and hybrid. I'm gonna choose satellite here. And then we can allow for zooming, rotation, throat scrolling, and 3D view. We can also ask to show the user's location, buildings, and points of interest. Remember, when working with a user's location, we still have to ask a user's permission to gain access to that. To do this, we simply open our info P list, and then we add in our key. In this case, I'm using NS location when in use usage description, and we'll just put here map view. Of course, in your own app, you'd want to put something a little more descriptive. Now, when I build and run, we should see our map. In this case, I'm getting an error saying that it could not instance the MK map view class. You'd think that you wouldn't run into this error because we're working with MapKit, but we need to actually import MapKit to our project itself. So I'm going to go to Build Phases, Link Binaries with Libraries. I'm going to hit the plus sign here, and I'm just going to put MapKit. Now when I build and run, we should see our map. And there it is. Now you can see here, we still haven't asked for permission. It simply says map kit location updates without prompting for location authorization. Let's do this now. 
Here I'm going to import MapKit. This way we can gain access to MapKit's API. And because we're importing MapKit, we don't need to import core location. That's already imported with MapKit. Here I've created a location manager and I've configured it the same way I've configured it throughout this series. Now let's stop this and build and run again. Here we can see allow MK demo to access your location when using this. We're going to say yes. And you can see here our location shows up. In this case, this is Apple headquarters. Now while this map is cool, we're going to ultimately want to zoom in into a region that is more applicable to our app. To do this, we need to set up an outlet to the map view. I'm going to open up my assistant editor and then right click and drag down beneath the location manager. Now I have my map view set up. I'm going to return back to view controller and now we're going to set up that region. Here we've created a location for Apple's headquarters, which is latitude and longitude. And then I've created a region radius, and this is going to be a thousand meters. With these two bits of information in place, I'm now going to create the actual region. To do this, I call the method MK coordinate region make with distance. I pass in the coordinate as well as the region radius. And you can see here, MK coordinate region radius. Here, it takes a longitudinal in meters and it takes a latitudinal in meters. That's why I passed in both. In this case, I want it to be 1,000 meters longitude, 1,000 meters latitude. And now I'm going to set the region. Now I'm going to build and run. And you can see right here, we zoom in on Apple headquarters. Even though this location isn't exactly at Apple headquarters, I'm actually, my location is set right next to it. We can also respond to delicate events. And to do that, we have to set our class as an MK map view delegate. If we come down here, I'll just create a new extension. And in this case, we'll do an MK map view delegate. One such method we may want to respond to is when the map view is rendering. In this case, I'll just simply call map view will start rendering map. And for the purposes of demonstration, we'll just print out rendering. Now I'm going to build and run. And now you can see it showed rendering when the map initially appeared. And now, as you can see, as I move it, we get more rendering messages. And these messages, again, are code opportunities that we can implement in our app. That's it for this video. But as always, we'd like to leave you with a challenge. In your challenge, you'll incorporate maps into the Interesting Places app to show users some greater detail about where that place is located. For more information, please see the challenge document. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.